Never wait for hot water again with a tankless water heater from Plumbing Experts. Tankless water heaters are easy, convenient, and now more affordable with a no interest financing for up to 18 months. Stop with the cold showers and wasted water and call Plumbing Experts today. Here's your weather video. Early on this Sunday morning, it's June the 7th, and Tropical Storm Cristobal is the weather headline this morning uh, near south of the Louisiana coast, some 170 miles south of Houma, about 190 miles south of New Orleans, moving to the north at 12 miles an hour this morning. You see the center there, the isobar is drawn, the low-level wind field, uh, and temperatures across the southeastern United States. You see the uh, uh, rainfall pattern associated uh, with the storm uh, from radars across the southeast United States showing a large area of rain extending back across southeastern Louisiana, coastal Mississippi, Alabama, northwest Florida with some of the heaviest rain uh, in northern Florida. There were actually tornado warnings overnight in uh, the Florida panhandle. Uh, this is the satellite picture. This is not an organized storm. Well, we know it's not organized. It might not even be tropical on further review. It probably is subtropical, but that's splitting hairs at this point because uh, it is producing uh, a good bit of wind. Uh, at Main Pass there at the, near the mouth of the Mississippi River, um, the, um, uh, they did observe tropical storm force winds, uh, the National Hurricane Center says. Currently, the, they have east-southeast winds at 26 knots gusting to 35 and uh, just east of there uh, at the uh, Apache uh, group station there they had uh, east-northeast winds at 24 gusting to 32 knots so those are um, getting uh, awfully close to a uh, tropical storm force right there and they have observed gusts over that uh, at Port Fouchon uh, 25 knot gusts at this hour uh, Galliano there south uh, or southeast of Homa uh, only had 18 knot gusts so those winds running about 20 miles an hour. Homa did have a, a gust to 20 knots. Uh, further east Gulfport uh, seeing gusts to 23 knots. Orange Beach, Gulf Shores, uh, Jack Edwards Airport showing a gust to 23 knots and the Naval Air Station at Pensacola showing gusts to 23 knots. So you can see the effect of the wind field uh, the New Orleans International Airport showing 27 knots, one of the stronger gust uh, reports that I could see on land. But you can see the storm, uh, uh, you know, some of its effects being felt really far away. The Air Force Reconnaissance plane actually found the strongest winds about 90 nautical miles away from the center. Now this is the, uh, the cone uh, and the wind field uh, showing the uh, 4 a.m. position of the storm there about 190 miles south of New Orleans. It's kind of curving a little to the north-northwest there as we've expected. It should make landfall along the Louisiana coast, uh, sort of between Grand Isle and Morgan City it looks most likely now, uh, somewhere around 5, 5.30 p.m. today, moving up uh, through Homa Thibodeau, then uh, onto the northeast. Uh, the main effects will be felt near and east of the center, as, I, as is almost always the case in a tropical cyclone. Um, but um, it will move up through eastern Louisiana, uh, clip the southwestern part of Mississippi, move back through northern Louisiana and into Arkansas, uh, passing into Arkansas um, early tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so tropical storm force winds are going to be felt uh, over an area from about, well, well, you know, the warnings, the uh, actual tropical storm warnings themselves, go fairly far to the east. Um, you know, the Hurricane Center has those, uh, you know, all the way over to the uh, Oka, I think it's the Okaloosa, let's see, let's make sure what we say there, the Okaloosa-Walton County line. So they're between uh, Destin and Fort Walton. Uh, but I think that the sustained tropical storm force winds probably are going to be felt, you know, probably from Bay St. Louis Ocean Springs back to the west. Through the greater New Orleans area, uh, you know, back through Slidell, Homa, Thibodeau, uh, those areas of eastern Louisiana, uh, perhaps up to around Monroe, uh, Natchez, Vicksburg, just south of Jackson, Mississippi, as that wind field contracts after it gets on land. Here in Alabama, we'll see some easterly, southeasterly winds averaging 10 to 12 miles an hour uh, in the central Alabama areas. Uh, to the south today, you'll see a little stronger winds. 
uh, down with those, um, you know, potential tropical storm gusts uh, in southwestern Alabama. Uh, you know, the storms coming into that area of the Gulf Coast where, you know, the effect of storm surge is magnified. This is that experimental peak storm surge product uh, that uh, guys from the Hurricane Center were talking about on Weather Brains a couple of weeks ago. Two to four feet expected from Morgan City to the mouth of the Mississippi River. Three to five feet from Ocean Springs back to the mouth. And then one to three feet across the rest of the Gulf Coast, all across Alabama, uh, northwest Florida, curving um, uh, through Appalachia Bay and down all the way to Marco Island in southwest Florida. That's the peak storm surge that is expected along the coast. This is 120-hour precipitation uh, on out through Thursday, capturing all of the rainfall. Uh, until a cold front moves through on Thursday, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, but, you know, larger area of, um, you know, four to seven, four to eight inches of rain across coastal Mississippi, southern Mississippi, southeastern Louisiana with those higher amounts. This includes some amounts from last night over northern Florida. You see some, uh, you know, totals approaching four to seven inches over there, too. Again, pointing to the uh, sort of disorganized nature. With uh, any landfalling tropical cyclone, we're watching for tornadoes, and that'll be a possibility in those feeder bands, especially where you got some instability uh, where they set up. That looks most likely today from about Mobile, uh, Mobile and Baldwin counties, especially back across the Panhandle southwest, where the greatest threat over southern Mississippi, extreme southwestern Alabama, including Mobile County, and southeastern Louisiana, including the New Orleans area. Now, we're going to be watching to see if those feeder bands um, set up anywhere into southwest, into western or southwestern Alabama because they would affect us. This is the SPC outlook for tomorrow. I think it may be drawn a little bit far to the west, but you know these guys know what they're doing. So we'll be watching again for any bands that set up in western Alabama, but I think we'll have to keep an eye on areas uh, from say, um, you know, Pickens County southward, maybe into the Tuscaloosa area southward tomorrow, just in case, as you'll see in just a moment. This is the HRRR for 4 p.m. today, uh, showing the possibility of uh, a few of those storms right north of the main rain area uh, developing. I think we'll have to watch those. That would be just um, slightly north of that marginal risk area, and uh, some that we'd have to watch later today. That's the HRRR. I'm uh, going to use the GFS to tell the story. This is 7 o'clock today, showing the storm right on the coast. Uh, you know, not getting uh, materially stronger, probably still a 50, maybe a 60 mile per hour tropical storm at that point moving on shore. Um, it makes its trek, uh, you know, to the north northwest overnight by noon tomorrow. It's um, near Ruston, perhaps um, moving into uh, El Dorado, Arkansas. Uh, moving on its northward course, we see uh, rain spreading up into western Alabama, um, and that's where we're kind of worried a little bit. This is off the wharf at 3 o'clock tomorrow, and you see that feeder band. That's right, those western counties in Alabama. Um, you know, probably more likely in the, this feeder band over Mississippi, but if we get any, and, and you know, if we, you know, are up in the middle, upper 80s tomorrow, uh, I guess middle 80s probably more likely lower 80s back in this area but you know very moist if we get any sunshine we get any instability destabilization at all these storms will have to be watched because they will have the potential to rotate as you can imagine look what you got right back there to the west a big source of rotation now the system uh, encounters the westerly starts turning to the north and northeast and actually begins to intensify again at probably strongest uh, in its entire lifespan uh, as it moves on toward Canada, but you see the low there in eastern Iowa by Tuesday afternoon. Now, back here in Alabama, we're stuck in the soup. Uh, nothing's changed in our air mass. We're warm and soupy. Uh, you know, the sun comes back out a little bit. We see showers and thunderstorms developing during the afternoon. Probably one of our better chances of rain comes Tuesday as those um, showers and thunderstorms develop. But they're going to be fairly scattered in nature, and uh, it's not going to rain everywhere. Now, Wednesday... As that system really gets cranked up, this big trough out west that's producing these winter weather advisories in parts of Idaho and Montana, frost and freeze advisories and warnings back in uh, uh, parts of southern Washington, Idaho, Nevada, uh, sends a cold front our way. I don't think this is where that cold front will be Wednesday. I differ with the GFS here. I think it'll be much slower. I think we'll see a bigger widespread uh, you know, area of showers and thunderstorms on Wednesday. 
coming during the afternoon again, probably again one of our better chances of rain on Wednesday. This front probably moves through later in the day than the depiction of the GFS, which shows this at 7 a.m. Uh, this might be 7 p.m. perhaps. And if that happens, of course, we'd have all that effect of the heating of the day. And that means that the front would not move through until later. Now, this is um, Thursday. And, and again, it kind of looks a lot what it would look like on Friday, too. But high pressure begins to build in over the southern United States. We dry out quickly. Um, our dew points drop. And we have a pretty pleasant end of the week and uh, end of the weekend. We'll see dew points in the 50s by Saturday morning. And while it won't be, you know, May by any stretch, it's going to be quite nice for June. And um, we'll see highs in the middle 80s on Saturday when we'll have an upper low just our north of the Ohio Valley, Kentucky area. You know, shouldn't have much of an impact on us. Maybe some uh, wraparound cloudiness. I think the precipitation stays to our north uh, there over southern Indiana, Kentucky, and on to our east. Um, Voodoo land, we stay pretty dry after that system moves out. Not really good news because we need, we'll be needing the rain. It's June after all. Sun's beating down and our um, evaporation is, of course, uh, reaching, you know, increasing amounts as we go through time. So our plants need more, uh, you know, need more rainfall. But this is uh, midnight on Saturday the 20th. Looks like our next widespread chance of rain as uh, a frontal system moves into the area. Lots of encountering a decent amount of moisture and instability. And that probably means a good chance of showers and thunderstorms. But we might go you know, somewhere on the order of a week, uh, or, well, not quite, I guess, how long would that be? You know, that would, that would be somewhere about a week to 10 days before we see significant rainfall again in Alabama. We had a delightful talk last Monday night with two meteorologists from the National Weather Service in Mobile. That was really timely. And uh, tomorrow night we'll be talking to um, one of your favorite app inventors, and mine too, the uh, inventor of the Radar Scope app, one that most of us have on our uh, iOS devices and uh, many of us use on our Macs, uh, and some television folks that we know and love use as well. Um, but we'll be talking to Mike Iles tomorrow night uh, with WDT on Weather Brains, the weekly netcast that's all about weather, and I'm sure we'll be talking about crystal ball. Well, until next Sunday when I'm back with this uh, weather video, I hope that you have a great week. And as I always tell you, keep an eye to the sky because you'll always have something fun to look at. KS Heating and Air, the team ensuring your comfort.